Today, we're going to learn about the muscles of the back of the thorax. And for that, I'm going to use a web-based platform called 4D Anatomy. You can see the link in the description below. Uh, it is basically a platform that uses actual well-dissected cadaveric images captured in a 3D format that enables you to virtually dissect through the layers and rotate it and pan it. So that will give you a three-dimensional perspective of the specimen. So what you see here is the uh, posterior aspect of the cadaver. This is the head, this is the neck and this is the uh, thorax. The skin is reflected on the left side. On the right side, a more deeper dissection is done. Here, when the skin is reflected, you can see the subcutaneous tissue with superficial veins and arteries, cutaneous nerves, along with fat that you see in the uh, superficial fascia. Uh, on the right side, you can see the deep fascia is reflected a little more, exposing the muscle. And this muscle that you see here is a trapezius. And then that is the most superficial muscle of the back of the thorax that you see. And uh, on this side, this is the lateral border of that trapezius. This is only part of the trapezius. On the uh, lateral border of the trapezius, you can see other muscles. This is part of the erector spinae muscle, uh, the lateral most part of the erector spinae muscle. Here, you can see the uh, medial border of the scapula. And here, you can see a peak of the rhomboidus muscle. You can see a format here. This is the trapezius. This is the rhomboid. So the trapezius is basically hiding a lot of rhomboids. So you can see only a part of rhomboids over here. You'll see that more when we dissect the rest of the layer. So I'm going to the next layer uh, by going to this navigation platform where I can increase the layer. Okay. We are going into the next layer. This is a deeper layer where you can see more an elaborate uh, origin of the trapezius. On the right side, the trapezius is cut and it is reflected from the origin it is reflected onto this side so this one is trapezius turned like a page okay so when the trapezius is turned like a page you can see more of the rhomboids on this side so the trapezius is reflected on the right side but it is intact on the left side so we'll, let us learn about the trapezius from the left side it is taking origin from the cranium from the uh, superior nuchal line medial aspect from the external occipital protuberance these are the uh, bony origins from the skull. After that, you have the origin taken from the ligamentum nuchae, which extends from the external occipital protuberance to the C7 spine, which is also called the vertebra prominence. So till there, you have a midline septum that runs like this. Okay, In this plane, it will go deep. And that is called the ligamentum nuchae. So that is the origin from the head and the neck. From here onwards, you have the origin from the all the thoracic spines the t1 to t12 thoracic spines and the supraspinous ligaments so the the origin of the trapezius is very wide from the head and neck and from the thorax it arises and it converges laterally getting attached to the crust of the spine of the scapula what you feel here it is a bony prominence that you can palpate that is called the crust of the spine of scapula and into that you can see it coming and converging but, but it is not only inserting to the crust of the spine of scapula it is inserting to a little more structures we will see that more better when we remove the skin so this is the next layer where that skin is removed and i can now rotate I can now rotate and now uh, here you can see the trapezius, the lower fibers, the middle fibers and the upper fibers all are converging into the crust of the spine of the scapula, the acromion and the lateral aspect of the clavicle. The formation of this is it is actually a bony ring. This is basically the pectoral girdle, the clavicle and the scapula is forming the pectoral girdle. So this formation somewhat looks like this. This is the crust of the spine of the scapula. This is the acromion. The acromion is going, uh, is projecting anteriorly. And the uh, medial aspect of the acromion is the point where the clavicle comes and articulates. So this is the bony ring. Uh, my left index finger forming the clavicle, this forming the acromion and this forming the crust of the spine of the scapula. So into this bony ring, the uh, trapezius comes and inserts. So the trapezius insertion is into the pectoral girdle. The origin is from the head and the neck and from the thoracic spines. So this wide origin and convergence uh, has some mechanical effects on the action of trapezius. So now let us classify the fibers of trapezius. I'll rotate back to a dorsal view. Here you can see that you have upper fibers that is they're attaching almost to the posterior aspect of the clavicle. 
the middle fibers that attach almost to the acromion and the wide lower fibers uh, converging upwards and attaching towards the spine of the scapula. So you can see the direction of these fibers are in this angle, but the direction of these fibers are like this. So they're almost the direction of these two muscles are uh, taking a 90 or more uh, angle between it. So if we think about the actions of trapezius, because of this variable direction of fibers, the actions of trapezius are also variable. One of the most important action of trapezius is the upper fibers. When the upper fibers contracts, the sh uh, shoulder, because of the attachment to the girdle, the shoulder will be elevated. This is called shrugging of the shoulder. This movement is called shrugging of the shoulder. And that is one clinical test by which you can test the action of the trapezius. And that is a very important movement. Suppose the trapezius is paralyzed due to loss of its nerve supply or due to a myopathy. Uh, the shoulder will be drooped on that side. The shrugging will be severely disabled. The next set of fibers that is called middle set of fibers, so the middle fibers are more important for retracting the scapula. The medial border of the scapula will be pulled more towards the medial border by the middle fibers. So that is more important for a retraction moment. The lower fibers are acting in this direction. The upper fibers are acting in this direction. If you look at the point of actions, the lower fibers are attaching here. The upper fibers are attaching to the, uh, the, to the posterior aspect of the lateral aspect of clavicle and the acromion. If you think uh, of these two muscles contracting together, the lower fibers and the upper fibers contracting together, it will sort of uh, make that uh, scapula move in a wing nut fashion. You know what is a wing nut and in a wing nut, if this side of that uh, winged nut is pulled like this and this side of the wing nut is pulled like this, it will cause a rotation like this. So that will cause a lateral rotation of the scapula. So the upper and lower fibers can synergistically act to cause a lateral rotation of the scapula and you know that lateral rotation of scapula is a very important movement for overhead abduction along with another muscle called serratus anterior. Now if you look at on the uh, right side you can see when the trapezius is removed you can see the rhomboids here. You have two set of rhomboid muscle it is called rhomboid because it is almost looking like a rhombus it is attaching to the uh, medial border of the scapula below the level of the spine of the scapula to the inferior angle and attaching to the T2 to T5 spines. So that is a rhomboidus major and above that you have rhomboidus minor attaching to C7 and T1 spine and towards the spine of the uh, scapula level. So these two muscles are also important retractors along with the middle fibers of trapezius. So if you think about the retraction movement of the scapula which is basically a bracing movement in which the, both the scapula and medial borders becomes closer the rhomboids and the trapezius play a very important part. The nerve supply of the trapezius is the spinal accessory muscle which you can uh, the spinal accessory nerve which you can see here the trapezius is reflected and you can see a wavy nerve a characteristically uh, wave like nerve that runs through the posterior triangle underneath the sternocleidomastoid this is sternocleidomastoid so underneath that it emerges out and attaches uh, to the deep surface of the trapezius and this is called the spinal accessory nerve. So that nerve is the uh, main supply of trapezius. So if that nerve is injured, trapezius can be paralyzed, causing affliction of the shrugging movement of the shoulder. The nerve supply of the rhomboids in turn is by the dorsal scapular nerve, which is a root value of C5. If I remove the rhomboids muscle, if I remove the rhomboids muscle, you can see one more a thinner muscle called the serratus posterior superior. That is the one that you see here that attaches to the ribcage and to the spine but that is not attached to the scapula as such. So that is the serratus posterior superior. So these are the main muscles that you see on the posterior aspect of the, the thorax.